Bray. Tony. What's up, man? What's up, honey? Nice to see you again. How are you doing? Well, fantastic. You're doing good? Yeah. All right. Welcome to Publix Aprons Cooking School Online. I'm Chef Ray from Plantation. And I'm Chef Tony from Jacksonville. It's March, and we have a few big games coming up this month. So what better time to talk about appetizers? We're going to make three recipes that are perfect for any game day or party. If you haven't already, you can find the recipes in the link below, publix.com forward slash online classes, and cook along with us. And for everyone who's tuned into the YouTube premiere of this episode, there are apron chefs waiting for you in the comment section to chat live during the premiere. If you have any question about any technique or recipes, just leave them a comment. We're gonna start things off with some beef empanadas featuring Maverick Ranch organic ground beef and Morton kosher salt. Next up, we'll cook our zucchini rollatini using some Galbani whole milk ricotta cheese and Little Italy in the Bronx marinara sauce. Love that. Mm. Last but not least, we're gonna be making some steamed spicy pork and black bean dumplings featuring Bush's Best Black Beans and Texas Pete Original Hot Sauce. All right, let's get to work. All right, Chef, ready? ready? Get to work. You know, one of the most important things that comes to, uh, that gets you through the season, game planning. What is game planning? Mise en place is what it is for the chef. What does that mean? There's a place for everything and everything in its place. This organization helps us flow through our cooking with ease to where we can come up with a product and get it right on the table and enjoy the party ourselves. Exactly. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna chop up some cilantro, which we already picked, and we're just gonna bunch that up. It's gonna make things a little easier for you guys to chop. That way you don't have to do everything on the board. It happens a little faster, a little quicker. Just keep everything nice and bunched. And we're gonna save some of the cilantro for the garnish on our empanadas. All right, so you're doing double the work all at one time. Exactly. I like it, working uh, smarter, not harder, Chef That's Ray. right, that's all what right. we do. Now we're gonna move on and we're gonna do some basil. And that's gonna go into our ricotta filling for our zucchini rollatinis. For this one, we just wanna stack up the basil leaves on top of each other. And then we're gonna roll them just to keep them into one little bundle. So, gonna give that a nice couple strips. You know what that's called, Chef? Um, chiffonade, if I'm not mistaken. Well, that's right. Tiny ribbons, if you will. Could be tiny, could be big. Well, only, only depends only, on what you're only, doing. You know, ribbons is what I wear in my hair when I, when I go out. Absolutely. Yeah, let the hair down like I do. You know, yeah, that's yeah. what we do. We could do that. Absolutely. So, here we have our basil done. And this is actually gonna be for you, so you're welcome ahead of time on that. Well, I appreciate the work. Well, this is, but you know, if you got somebody else in the kitchen with you, teamwork, right? Teamwork helps us get together, helps us process some things. I'm gonna put this over here for the filling. And then, you know what? This is a very versatile vegetable chef, right? This zucchini right here. Um, typically, we just chop it up, saute it, grill it, things like that. But uh, we oftentimes forget that we can stuff it as well. Right. On. So I'm gonna cut the, uh, the stem off here, just like that. And then I'm gonna take a peeler and I'm gonna peel some strips right off. I wanna to get to the wider part of the zucchini. So the first couple of strips, you know, we can kind of hold off to the side, maybe save them for a zucchini salad later. But we wanna start moving to those wider pieces because we're gonna cross hatch these as we go to lay them down and make our filling. So you see, nice even pressure as we come through, gives us a nice clean cut. So I'm gonna do this 36 times. Wow. Well, I need to make nine of them, right? Got so, it. four per is what we're looking at, Chef Ray. Sure. So, you're going to be there for a little bit. You know, I'm going to hang out for a moment or two. All right. That's cool. While Tony makes his uh, zucchini ribbons, we're going to grate up some mozzarella. So, here we have fresh mozzarella from our deli department. You like this stuff? I do. You know, I, I, like, to, uh, I like to get it and uh, grate it down like you're doing. Sometimes I like to slice it and put it in a caprese salad. Um, I find it to be a very versatile product that we can have and do some things with. Now, what's the tip you were telling me about this? If you can freeze, um, it, for just a little bit, make it a little bit harder, the grating process will go a little bit easier for you in terms of it warming up in your hand, right? Because we have a natural body heat, and that'll warm that up. Got it. So here we have our cheese, and that, again, for you, buddy. Oh, I appreciate it, man. You were doing all the work for me, Chef Ray. You know I try, buddy. All right, so you know what? I'm gonna reciprocate a little bit. I'm going to peel and mince up some ginger. So look at this. I have a hand that's, of ginger, right? Each one of these is a finger, right? So snap that finger right off, okay? Oh, so you don't have to buy the whole thing. No, I, I can buy the what I need is the key. Now, as I look at it, I'm gonna buy that. Oh, you, well, you could, I guess. I don't know, a little slight weight, but save it for later. Yeah. 
Oh, right? Really good. The skin here, as the ginger gets a little bit older, the skin gets a little bit thicker. So if you have young ginger, it's thin. Older ginger, a little bit thicker. But I'm not going to use a peeler. I'm not going to use a knife. I'm going to turn to another implement in the kitchen, a spoon, right? This is what we want. And as I go, I'm going to take it, I'm going to brace it, and I'm going to peel it across the finger of ginger, I'm not worried about little nodules. If I have enough pressure, it'll come clean. Now look at that. Right off is what we're talking about right here. Cleaning it good. I'm going to move that to the side. And I only need a half inch of this for the pork dumpling, here, so. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. And then I'm gonna treat it like a piece of garlic where I lay it on the board, put my knife on top, making sure the spine is facing away from my dominant hand. Oh, put the shield guard up. It could be a show here, folks. Take my hand, <laughs> smash it right down just like that. Yep. Did I get you? Yeah. Right in the but eye, it's okay. huh? It's all right, it stings a little bit, but that's okay. And look, I'm just gonna come across a couple of times, get this going, and mince this up, and then we'll put that with the rest of the uh, mise en place for our pork dumpling. Love it. We have our oven preheated at 375, and we're gonna start with our empanada filling while Chef Tony wraps up that ginger. Uh, we have our pan here. We have some of our beef. This is everything in the pan all at once. We have our raisins, we have olives, we have peppers, and we have some uh, green onions. All of that goes in there. We also have some tomato paste, some garlic, And we have beef stock. And for our seasonings, looking good right there. Oh, we have it. some pepper. We, I can smell it already. We have some pepper, we have some salt, and we have some cumin. Some of our cilantro, that's gonna go in there as well. And you wanna break this up. It's not gonna take very long to cook, uh, but it will need to be broken up just so that it can all fit in your empanadas. Thanks, chef. Yeah. Uh, about this tomato paste here, have you used this before? I have. Um, I love that it's double concentrated. In some instances, I don't have to use as much as I would in just a regular can. But for me, it's how it closes and, and stays in the uh, refrigerator. Very cool. I can start to smell that already. I can't wait for that to, uh, to yeah. be done. And then uh, maybe we'll be able to waft it out for, for everybody else to try to smell. What do you think? I'll think about it. Okay, all right, you think about that. Hey. All right. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, going on our zucchini filling right here. I got the mozzarella, the one cup. I need a quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese. So we're just gonna take that, add it right into the bowl. Next up, three quarters of a cup of ricotta. That slides right in. I need a quarter teaspoon of salt, an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper, and some basil, Chef Ray. Right inside, just like that. Basil looks familiar. Oh, I, well, you know, um, whoever did it cut it really nicely, did a really fantastic job. Oh, thanks. And you see I'm using the back of the spoon as to, to do this, that way I can press the ingredients together, making sure that they're spread evenly throughout the filling, so as with each bite, we'll have a good taste of, of a, what's going on. The basil, the cheese, the salt, the pepper, all the wonderful stuff. So our empanada filling is ready. What we want to do now is we want to cool it down. But before we do that, we're going to smell this because we need to. Oh, that's just, can't resist. No, oh, bring that in, Chef Ray. Yeah, there we go. Bring that. Do what? we want to? You guys too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Let's, let's give them a little cool. something, there huh? There the oh. One's in the back. There it's you delicious. go. Delicious. Cool. Smells delicious. It's I can't cool wait to. cool at this to. point. And I'm going to taste it. Go ahead. Give it, give it a little taste right there. What do you say? Cumin the olives, everything. Very, very good. We have a sheet pan here, and this is just to kind of spread it out, and it's going to cool a little faster. It's gonna make this uh, more manageable, not gonna burn yourself, and you're also not gonna soften up the dough uh, too much on this. So just take a couple minutes to cool down, and we're gonna assemble some rollatinis. Yeah, you know, well, you see what I'm doing right here? I'm putting a little cross, uh, cross hatch pattern, or, you know, for those that are out there on the social media, hashtag. Uh, Got you. Or pound sign. Right? Yeah. Pound, pound sign. It's pound sign. Well, okay, whatever yeah, you yeah. say, Chef Ray. Yeah, it's... So I have my filling. What I'm going to do, I could separate it into nine different portions as I would make nine of these. And then I would take one of those portions. You know, we're going to go, yeah, let's say, yeah, that, oh, that looks beautiful right there. And I'm going to put it right in the middle of the cross, uh, of the hashtag, the cross, uh, the cross hatch right there. Just like that. 
Oh, All looking right. wonderful right here. Let's put a little bit more in that one, right? Maybe I'll give that one to you. You never know. I'm going to take the sides. I'm going to fold them up and over. Take the ends. Fold. If I, There we go. I grabbed it. And boom. One packet right there. I'm going to show you the next one. Just how we do this. Up and over. All right? You watching? Closely now. Here we go. Over and then look. And then I, you see I have a pan here. It's because you've been practicing. Well, look at that. You, you see that you're right. Yeah, yeah. I have a cup of the marinara sauce in here already. I'm going to put them right in. I'm going to go right here. Oh, you know what? There you go. I'm just going to pour a little bit over the top, making sure that I'm, I'm roughly about a cup. And I'm going to grab the rest of my Parmesan cheese. And I'm gonna shake it. That one. That all, one for all, right there. All, all on that one. Yeah, I can't all do the that. that. I can't do that. They may want Dude, some out there, I, huh? I want the Parmesan. Well, look. There we go. We have some on all. I'm gonna turn. And what am I gonna do? Teamwork it. Teamwork. And see. go. Boom. Right into the oven. Look at that. And we'll come back and visit that in a little bit. All right. Before we start building our empanadas, I want to remind everyone watching during the episode premiere that we have some of our apron chefs waiting to chat with you live. If you see us do something and have any questions about it, all you have to do is just ask. We're gonna build some empanadas. I have some shells here that are defrosted, ready to go. That's for you. All right, thank you, sir. That's for me. We're gonna divide and conquer. All right, so we're gonna lay them down on the board, right? You, we're gonna have a pattern are you gonna use? I, I like your pattern. The so, diamond? The diamond. We're going to do the diamond. It's because we like our food to shine bright in, in, in company, that's right? That's right. And look at that. I, I gave you the five just in one. I didn't even count them. All right. That's pretty good there, yeah. Chef. Yeah, you know what happens. All right. So we have some egg here that is beaten. We're going to just give it a little brush on the top half of the empanada. I like it. Like the last piece of the basketball as it descends into the goal? Yeah. That's the way you score a home run. Oh. If you say so, Chef. Uh, I try. Okay. All right. So we're going to take some of our filling. And you want to just put a bit in the center. You don't want to overcrowd uh, this. You don't want to put too much in there. Um, some of it can come out. Not good. Plus, we want to make sure we have enough for everybody. All right. Unless you're just making one empanada for me, Chef Ray, then you can put all the filling in there. We need bigger, we uh, do that. We need we bigger discs, though, for that. We could do that. All right. I'm going to hand this over to you. All right. And I can fill mine? You can fill yours. Excellent. Thank you, sir. There you go. For the fold, we're going to turn and just make sure that we close that seam. This is very important uh, just to keep everything inside. But also, if you were to fry these, which is an option, it keeps them together from opening, bursting open. Now, Tony, I don't know about you. But I like empanadas. You know, Ray, I, uh, my, my first real taste of them was when you came up to my cooking school, spent a little time with us, and made some empanadas for my, uh, my associates, my chefs. And uh, we really got a, a more of an authentic flavor, sure. as, as knowing this is part of your heritage, that, uh, than us just kind of making them ourselves. Yeah, plus it was nice to you know, cook, for, cook for you guys. All right? I like it. We share. That's right. Our fork. We're going to crimp these now. So what you want to do is just take a fork and press it down and go all the way around. And I'll show you one here, a little closer. And you get this nice little crimp on your empanada. All right, here I come. I got my fork now, Ray. You're not done yet? Right, well, you know, started a little bit after you. But uh, I'm going to try our best to finish together. Oh, <laughs> what are you doing? All right. I see. I'm done. Oh, uh, yes, you are. I'm now, catching up. we want to egg wash these. It's going to give us a nice little shine on top when we bake them. And you can do whatever kind of filling you want on these. Tony, do you prefer sweet or savory? Um, I like savory, but uh, sometimes it depends upon the sweet. I mean, if, if there's guava and goat cheese involved, 
I'm surely down for that, you know. Right up, most definitely. We're gonna pop these in the oven. You can do uh, chicken, you could do fish, you could do ham and cheese, just cheese. You can go into savory. Marshmallows? Uh, chocolate? Chocolate, right? Yeah. I bet they want some more of that, huh? There you go. And make it for the people. See what you did there. What, what? All right. Let us work on the pork. Well, Together, we're gonna tag team this one. It's the last thing that we have, and you know, we've been, uh, we showed some teamwork early on, but I like continuing it, just like you said. Perfect. All right, so I am gonna show you uh, how we like to separate egg whites. I like to just crack it, and I'll open it into a bowl. A lot of times you can open it into your hand, depending upon how daring you are. And then I'll dip my hand in, just like that, and I'll alternate back and forth letting the white sift through my fingers. If I need to, I'll cut it. So I have that right there. I have that yolk to the side, but my hands are a little uh, contaminated now. A little so bit. I'll, I'll little go bit. to the sink yeah, and I'll wash them. I'll be right back, go Chef. Ahead. We're gonna take our ground pork, some green onions, our cabbage, our garlic, I'm sorry, our ginger, I apologize. Our garlic. And we're gonna leave our black beans for a little later. We're gonna add our egg white, some soy sauce, love it. And one of my favorites, our sesame oil. Smell that. Oh, hold on. There oh, that's go. fantastic. I yeah. love that, that, that rich stuff. smell. And our hot sauce, after all these ice, spicy dumplings. You can add a little more, you can add a little less. And then, we're going to start to incorporate this. All right, I'm gonna step behind you. I'm gonna move these things out of the way, Chef. That way uh, we have a little bit more workspace for everybody to see what we're doing. You got it. All right, go. so notice we're just incorporating this pork and now we're going to add our black beans. All right, okay. How do you want me to do it? Uh, All at I, once? I like one at a time. Okay, hold on so, here. Yeah, we're gonna go one right there. One. Yep, and then we have full. Two. No, two, and then another one. Three. Yep. And Four. Oh, oh, wait, get that one back. All right, there we go, look. Spill the beans. Every, I spilled the beans, you better believe it, Chef. All right, so now we're folding. We don't want to break these beans apart. We don't want to make a mush. I like it, looks like everything is uh, ready to go. Mix through, you ready to taste it? I'll pass. Okay, so we, what you're saying is we got to wait till it's cooked. Yes. Right, so we're not, uh, there's some things that may be in some ground beef and we got certain temperatures to, uh, to, to look Absolutely. to. Absolutely. Okay. All right, I'm gonna a put a- Couple spoons here. I'm gonna put some wonton wrappers down. There you go. Right. Here's a spoon for you, a spoon for me. I appreciate that, thank you, Chef. I'm gonna do five. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start taking some of this filling and putting it into the center. I'm not looking for a lot of filling, just enough to kind of make the center look full. Uh, too much, Ray, too much, right? There we go. Dropping it down in there. Make sure you get some beans. You're gonna want that flavor. There we go. Nice and easy. Oh yeah. I love this. What other fillings can we do, Chef? You know, we could do a shrimp. A shrimp mousse is really good inside of this. You could do a roasted vegetable. Really up to you, turkey's good, chicken. And then, uh, kind of your choice. So guys, you can do whatever you want on these. Right? Just make it tasty. We're gonna take the sides, gonna push it up into the meat, pinching as we go to make sure that they all adhere. Make yourself a little dumpling. Do it on the cutting board or your work surface. That way, the bottoms are flat and when you go to transition them into the steamer, they'll stand in there nicely. They won't roll around and then run into each other. So we don't want that to happen. There you go, pull them up and then squish it in. Ah, oh, this is fun. Oh, I'm having a good time. You know, this is also something that's uh, beneficial for children to do because you're not really worried about them messing it up. So you can start having everybody come in. Maybe you're, uh, you want to do a, a little birthday party for your kids, you know. They can do this and uh, have a good time. There you go. All right, I'm gonna finish my last one up. If you'll uh, grab our steaming apparatus over there. Right on. There you go. All right, so we have our dumplings here. We have a bamboo uh, steamer, and we have a wok is what we chose to use today. Maybe you don't have these things at home. We'll talk about that. We're gonna put our dumplings right inside. Oh, you're two-handing, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got this, all right? Look, I can do it too, huh? Yeah. There we go, there we put go. the lid back on it. 
And we're going to put it back on the stove top over some high heat, making sure that we're able to generate a boil and we get some steam. So while that happens, what do you say we talk about some... Um, Let's talk about some options. There we go. We like options. Um, Chef Ray just went down to the, to the basement real quick. He's going to pull some things up for me. What you got? All right. First up, everyday colander. I got some handles. It'll sit over a four-quart, five-quart pot right there. Set it in. Line it with either parchment paper, Napa cabbage, some other kind of leaf, um, just to make sure that the dumpling doesn't stick. Put the lid on it. Good to go. Next up. Vegetable steamer, as I like to call, this is the kitchen flying saucer because it opens up, flies around. Boom, just like that again. Line it with some cabbage, put it inside of your pot, and you'll be good to go. Here we go. And from out of uh, left field right there, the grill basket from outside. It's got all these holes in it. Again, go ahead, line it with parchment paper or some sort of liner, put it on top of the pot, and then cover it with a lid. And last but not least, the big pot. I love these things, not only for, uh, for steaming, which is what we would use it for, but also crab boils, shrimp boils, cooking pasta, um, just a lot of things that you see in your kitchen when you're a kid and, and develop different uses for it. So here we have a pot, put about an inch of water in the bottom, line it, we have holes, so we make sure that the steam is gonna get through, insert it back in, and then as you can see, we talked about using pots for other steaming methods. Beautiful. Man. Chef Ray just created a multi-layer steaming apparatus for us that we could use. All we need was a big lid, Chef. Love that. Awesome. So. I'm starving. Zucchini rollatini's been in. Yeah. The panadas are in. Dumplings are going. I think we've had enough time for the rollatini's. Maybe we could pull those out. If you'll grab them, I'll get us some plates Perfect. and get us set up and ready to go. Go for it. Oh, yeah. Oh, that looks delicious, Chef Ray. All right. So All right, have I'm ready to go. Oh. Oh, we're going to oh. do well, that. you see that? Oh. Not sharing. Oh. Not sharing. All right, look. So I'm going to take an offset spatula. The sides are a little high here. I'm going to try to use anything else. It could be a little rough. And I need both of them. I'm going to come in. I'm going to grab it. And I'm going to lift up. I'm going to serve you first, Chef Ray, because it's a pleasure being here with you. I'm going to lift this one up. I'm gonna put it right there. And if you look in the pan, right, if you see that that zucchini kind of left out a little bit of water came out of it, that's okay. We can take this and put it in a bowl and put it to the side or even spoon a little bit more on the plate if we wanted to. That way we can enjoy it a little bit more of a dipping sauce. Are you, you ready to taste? I'm ready. All right. Cheers, buddy. Woo! Mm. Oh yeah, look at that cheese just coming out of it there. It was right out that pocket, didn't it? I bet it's gonna be so delicious. And hot. Mmm. Mmm. The texture's wonderful. The, uh, the zucchini isn't cooked in mush, so it's got an al dente texture to it. The ricotta cheese is creamy. Mmm. The acid from the tomato. The parm. And the, oh, this is good stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, this isn't just all about eating and relaxing and hanging out. Sometimes maybe you take your party to the next level you do some pairings with it, right? A nice light red um, Italian wine would be good. Maybe a, a Hefeweizen from, from a beer, just something lighter. Even maybe something with a little bit of a, I don't know, an orange uh, taste to it. A little background would work well with that ricotta cheese. Tony has the best selection in his house. He's got everything. I'll provide the address on the link below. Mm. He won't do that, because I only got a little bit, so. You want to check on the empanadas? I'm down for looking at the empanadas. Let me move this out of the way. So I have some that we actually made a few minutes before uh, because the other ones still have a little bit more to go. So we have these here. How about a plate, Chef Ray? Plate's good. Now uh, with this right here, would we just serve it like this? Well, that's the fun part. You can do whatever you like with them. Um, Tony likes to cut them in half, plate them up so you can show off the filling, especially if you're making different uh, fillings for it. Um, you can also do them whole like this. You can do whatever you want. If you want a dipping sauce, uh, maybe a little cilantro, sour cream, whatever you want to do is fine. So you saved a little cilantro for us. Yep. Right? So how about, put one? can you put one on my board for me? Sure. I'm going to cut mine in half, a little bit on the bias right here. Does that sound all right? That sounds fantastic. I'm going to put it on my plate. You want a little 
little little sprinkle. Yeah, yeah, because you know I want to I want to show that off, and then you're gonna hit me with a little bit of green right there. Oh, 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 oh. You know what green means? It's time to eat. Time to eat. All right. Oh, hold on. Mmm. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm. My words can't capture how great this tastes. I'm telling you, it's delicious, Chef Ray. Picking up the raisins. The raisins, which contrast with the olives. The saltiness. Mm. Mm-hmm. I Good love stuff. it. Love what's going on right here. And then last but not least for us, we have those dumplings. Got to check them first. Okay, what's important about uh, about that ground meat that we want to let everybody know? You want to shoot for the magic number, 165. So let's see. And we are good to go. All right. Bring them on over. We have some tongs. I'll get us some. Uh, so you know what I like forks? to do with these? Oh, oh. If um, we're making different flavors, different uh, fillings, yeah, you can actually stack these up and just put this on the table, and have folks just kind of dig in the layers. Okay, so instead these... of instead of dirtying a platter, we, we're using yeah. What I don't want to wash it to put it out. I, hear uh, you. I already cooked. I'm, All right, I'm gonna not do dishes, uh, but yeah, you can just save them right in the basket. I'll get you. Looks fantastic. Now the dumplings alone are great. But we like to put a little bit of sauce with it. We have some sweet chili sauce. If you like it uh, a little bit spicier, bring out that uh, that Texas Pete hot sauce, mix it in there. Um, I love fish sauce as well. Um, a little bit of a dark soy, soy. Um, things of that nature. So, and uh, oh, you're gonna go, you're gonna he's gonna sauce it up for us, I got ladies you, buddy. and gentlemen. Check that out. Oh, this uh -huh. is called chefing it up. So hold your spoon a little higher and let it drizzle, and you'll be uh, oh, not that high, chef, right? Oh. All right. Oh, yeah, huh? Small I'm going to take this one in the hot. front. Here you go, sir. I got you. I got you a clean I got, I'm Good, man. Small oh, piece. All right. All right. Oh, delicious here. Oh. And the black beans are holding their integrity. Right. Really, really good. Mm. I love that sauce. That's a wonderful, wonderful appetizer. So, hey, these are party appetizers, right, Ray? That's right. Man, let's get some of the crew in here. Come try some of this and uh, let us know how it tastes. Moving target. Oh, there we Enjoy, go. Enjoy, guys. Hey, save some for the, for the rest of them. Oh, Way I like go, that guy buddy. right there. Way to go. He's down for partying, Chef Ray. Remember, everyone, click on that link below to find the list of our Aprons Cooking School locations. Sign up for a class, grab some friends, and come cook along with some talented chefs in person. We had a great time. Hope you did too. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Ray. Did you fill out your bracket yet? Uh, you know me. Going where all number ones. There you go. Mm -hmm.